Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. It's time to put a door in this three-sided box. Well, this definitely qualifies as the biggest thing that's ever been brought to my house by Amazon, and I can only imagine the frustration of a delivery driver, but this is a door. What do you say we get it unpacked and take a look at what's inside? Why? Did I buy a door on Amazon? Well, I don't know if you guys have priced out doors, but they're not cheap. And this one looked like it fit the bill. And it wasn't quite as expensive as all the other ones. I did think about buying a used RV door and I did search Marketplace and all the other used places. And I could have bought one two, three hours drive away and probably save myself a couple hundred dollars, but then I'm getting a used door. This is a new door. I think this is gonna be up to the task. I think that'll do. Now this door is about six feet high on the door itself and about 30 inches wide. The door opening will be slightly narrower than that, but it's about that size. So it's nice and wide. It's reasonably high, and as far as an RV door goes, it's one of the higher ones. The reason I'm not overly concerned with going with an Amazon door is it is a standard size door. So if I find in a couple of years that this door is absolute garbage, I can just find another one that's the same size to fit into the same hole. Are we ready to cut a hole in the side of the truck? I think I'm going to lay out some lines in tape first and uh, double, triple, and quadruple check the measurements. I only get one shot to get this right. When I measure the back of the door, it seems to be about 29 and 3 quarter inches wide, which I assume is a 30 inch cutout, an eighth of an inch spare space down each side. So I found the center of the open space that I have, and I've used the center line to go back 15 inches on each side. And it's going to give me a rough place to start for where my door cutout is going to be. You know, now that I think of it, having drawn the door on there, I think I'm going to take a little bit more time and I'm going to draw the seat bench, the fridge, where the bed's going to go, where the nature's head fits, just to get a bit more of a visual. It's not going to change where the door goes, but I like the idea. So I've got the rough layout done. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark my inch and a half up along the bottom, which is the same as the aluminum lip on the outside. And the easy way I have of doing this is using my square because that's an inch and a half. So this will end up being a marker that doesn't work. Okay, marking my inch and a half up from the bottom to match the outside, and this one does work. With the baseline marked, I measure 72 inches up to get the top cut line, or at least the tape line. Using my square to make sure the lines are perpendicular to the floor, I start the vertical lines and then continue them with a long straight edge. Once the top is marked, I need to mark the upper radius to match the door. There's a couple ways to draw a radius. The easiest is finding something that matches the radius. The radius at the top of the door is bigger than that. Handily, it's exactly the same size as the suction cups that we used in the last episode to mount these walls. So once again, great use for a suction cup. Totally not its intended use. Yes, these suction cups even stick to the uneven surface partially covered in tape, and they match the door radius perfectly. 
that's all the marking done. Here we are day two and I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to get things done today but I'm going to see if I can at least get the whole cut. Now I did have a couple of thoughts and one of them is the way the back of the door works, the back of the door, the bottom of the door works. There's actually a half inch step between where the bottom of the door frame is and where the bottom of the door is. So I want this to land flush with the top of the aluminum on the outside. So that means what I want to do is move the door cut out up by half an inch, which is easy. I've got lots of tape on there and that's going to give me a little bit more margin of error on the outside as well. It's going to leave a little bit more meat at the bottom. So I'm setting up a jig, which is basically a half inch piece of plywood and that matches the offset of my saw blade to get me a half inch above the lip on the outside. Now I've also taped on the outside roughly where the door is going to be. The top's going to be off by half an inch, but that's going to give me my cut line right about here. I'm going to do a radius in the corner. I am going to be cutting this from the inside of the truck because it's much easier to work inside. I'm not standing four feet below. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to start with the bottom corners. And as I mentioned earlier, even though this is a square corner on the door, I'm going to do it with a radius because I don't want any area for stress to concentrate in the fiberglass that we could then get a crack coming out from. Okay, so I just punched through the other side and I'm just going to go far enough that I cut through the fiberglass shell. Okay, so that's through. Do the same thing down here. And then I've got my mark that I can cut my saw line across the bottom of here and I know where to stop. Not much left to do but cut. I've uh, vacuumed up a little bit of dust that came through to the inside. I did go on the outside and check and the holes appear to be where I want them to be. All that's left to do now is punch a saw through the side of my truck. I can tell you 1000% you want to make sure you're wearing your safety squints and you might even want a full face shield because this sucker spits chips all over the place and they're just nailing you everywhere at the same time. Also note that I'm wearing long sleeves and gloves. Much of this fiberglass you can keep off your skin, the more comfortable you'll be six hours later. Next up, I'm going to take the hole saw, go through my original hole that came from the inside and <clears throat> just cut the little radius here. Do the same thing back here and then I'll cut down to that radius with the jigsaw and across. What I have done is both on the inside up high and on the outside down low, I put an extra piece of tape back over where I cut so that when I do free up the upper and lower corners, it's still somewhat held in place and shouldn't just fall out on me. Again, I'm only cutting the outer skin to have a nice clean cut through the fiberglass. I've got a bimetal blade in here and I can't remember the, the actual blade number, but I'll put the spec up on the screen there. And I'm going to run this saw at its lowest speed possible. That's it for the bottom. Let's do the top. We're about to make a hole in the side of the truck, officially. I'm really taking my time here for two reasons. I don't want the blade to wander between the inside and outside layers, and I don't want to risk the blade pulling the skin away from the core. These are shortcuts, and I don't need to take any shortcuts. That door should be free. Welcome to the world. A 
I put it on the wrong side. No, I didn't. Now that the cutout is out, I'm going to take all the tape off the outside and then reapply a fresh two inch wide layer of tape so that when I set the door in place, I can trace the perimeter and mark where all the mounting holes are. Now let's see if we can get this sucker to fit. Everything on the inside looks as I was expecting, so I'm pretty happy with the fit of how that door went in. I did mention at the beginning of this video that I purchased this door on Amazon, so if you're looking for a door, check out the video description and you'll find a link there. There are a couple of things that I do want you to consider if you're door shopping. Number one, my walls are an inch and a half thick and this door is designed to go into a two inch thick wall. I knew that going in and that leads into part number two. These doors do not come with an interior trim ring. Because of that, and because the door is two inches thick, I knew I was going to have to make my own interior trim ring, which helps with part number three. This is an aluminum frame door, and one of the biggest things we try to avoid in building something like this is thermal bridging. And that's where a piece of aluminum or steel, any kind of metal, is conductive of heat and transfers it from the outside all the way through to the inside. This is an area that I knew I was going to have thermal bridging, but my interior trim ring should help cover up the aluminum on the inside, so it should minimize the thermal transfer. The third thing that you probably want to consider is something that wasn't even on my radar until I started talking to a few people who have built these. I want to go around the side and get you a better look, right from there, at what I'm talking about. It may seem pretty simple, but the side of the door on which your hinges are can be catastrophic. Originally, my plan was to have the door hinge here and open this way. And that's what's known as a suicide door. Because if for any reason this doesn't latch and you're driving down the road and it cracks open, your door is going to whip open, smash into the side of your camper, and give you a really bad day. So putting the hinges on the forward side, if this happens to crack open, the wind coming down the side of the truck is going to keep it mostly closed. Probably the most important thing that I had not considered at all. Make sure you think about that before you buy your door. If you've got any questions about anything that I've done in this build, throw them in the comment section down below and I'll do what I can to answer them. And if you like this type of video, give us a thumbs up. It really does help. The next step I have to do in installing this door is actually to router out a section of the interior of the wall in the foam and insert some plastic blocks. And that's because the strength of the foam for retaining a screw is pretty minimal. In order to do that, I need to get a new router bit, which I don't have. So that's all I've got for this video. Make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned, come back next time. Thanks for watching and we'll see you then.